Hi and welcome back. We're on EDM 5.3 and today we're going to talk about adding fractions and mixed numbers. Now in order to get started with this, one of the things that we're going to do is work with Math Journal page 160 to start with. Now at the top of the page it is a math message and it says to choose the best estimate for each problem. Then write the answer for any problem that you can solve mentally. If we look at the first one, um, it's already done for us. If we look at this, we have two-fifths plus one-fourth. We will see that our denominators are not the same here. So we can't add those. We would have to rename. But right now, um, if I'm looking at that, I can make an estimate, though. I know that two-fifths is almost half because half of five is two and a half. So that's almost half, but it's under half. And I know that one-fourth, that's not very much, so I'm going to put zero. So if I have a half and I add hardly anything to it, I'm going to be still about a half. Okay, good. Let's look at number two. If we're looking at number two, we can see that our denominator is the same for each one of those fractions, which makes it really nice because we can just add across the top. If we add these together, we know that 1 plus 4 is 5. 5 plus 3 would be 8. So we are looking at 8 ninths. And we know 8 ninths is close to 1. It's only 1 ninth away from 1. So we have about 1. So that makes that one nice because it's nice and easy. Let's look at our next one, number 3. We have 3 fourths plus 5 eighths. Nope, the denominators are not the same there, so let's go ahead and just make an estimate. We know that 3 fourths is about 1, right? And we know 5 eighths. Well, if I'm looking at 5 eighths, let's think about this. What's half of 8? Yeah, half of 8 would be 4, so this is close to half. It's a little over half, but it's close to half, so it's going to get me to about 1 and a half. So if I'm looking at this, would I choose a little less than one, a little more than one, or a little more than two? Yeah, I would go a little bit more than one. Good. Let's look at our next one. Um, we have here, we end up having a mixed number, and you'll see in this lesson on our next page as well, we're going to be working with mixed numbers and adding them. Now in this particular case, we have two and four fifths plus one and two thirds. Our denominators aren't the same here, so what we're going to do is just make an estimate and see how close we would get to an answer. We know that 2 and 4 fifths, well 2, and we have 2, and then 4 fifths, that's almost close to 1. So if we have 2 and almost 1, it's almost 3 here, okay? So we can say that that's about 3. And if I look at 2, I'm sorry, 1 and 2 thirds, I know 2 thirds is almost 1, so I'm looking at almost another 1 here. So that would be 2. Now, I kind of overestimated on both of those, so I would get 5 there as my estimate, but it's kind of an overestimate. So let's look over here, and what would you decide? About 3, a little less than 4, or between 4 and 5? Yeah, I would choose between 4 and 5 as well, because it would be under 5. Good. All right, number 5 says... 2 and 1 16th plus 5 and 1 16th. Yeah, our denominators are the same, so we can go ahead and add those up. When we go to add these up, the first thing you would want to do is to add the fraction part. So we would have 1 16th plus 1 16th. So 1 plus 1 is 2, good. Bottom number 16. And then we would add in our whole numbers. So 2 plus 5 is 7, good. So we have 7 and 2 16ths. Now I can also simplify that. I can leave it like that, but I could simplify it. I would bring over my seven, because that would stay the same, but I can reduce this, because I know there is a number that would go into two and 16 evenly. Do you know what that number is? Yeah, it would be two. Two divided by two would be one, and 16 divided by two would be eight. So we're looking at seven and one eighth, okay? So you can leave it like that, but it would be a better answer if you would go ahead and simplify that. So 7 and 1 eighth, we actually have our answer. So is it a little less than 7, a little more than 7, or about 8? Yeah, it's a little bit more than 7. Good. All right. 
And then we have one more on this page. We have two and seven eighths plus one and three eighths. Yep, our denominators are the same, so that makes it nice. Okay, so we're looking at seven eighths plus three eighths. Start with your fraction. So seven plus three, yep, would be 10, so 10 eighths. And then we need to add our whole numbers. Two plus one would be three, good. I'm not gonna leave it like that because that's an improper fraction, so I'm gonna go ahead here. Now I know, looking at this, that eight can go into 10 how many times? One time, good. So that would be another whole. So that would bring that three up to a four. Now if it went in one time, that means I used eight of it, so how much would be left over? Yeah, two. Two would be left over and my bottom number would stay the same, good. Yeah, do you notice that as well? See, I can still reduce that, so I can take that again. Now, I can leave that answer because it's a good answer, um, but I could also simplify that. So my whole number would stay a four, and what number would reduce two eights? It has to be the same number that would go into two and eight. Yeah, two. Two divided by two would be one, and eight divided by two would be, yeah, four. Good. So four and one fourth would end up being our final answer. So if we look over here, is it a little bit more than three, a little less than four, or a little more than four? Yeah, we would end up with a little bit more than four. Good. So you'll notice that we didn't actually solve the ones that didn't have the same denominator, but we were able to solve the ones that did. On the other ones, we just made a really good estimate. All right, now what I'd like you to do is to look at Math Journal page 161, and it looks like this. What you will notice on this page, we have mixed numbers that we are going to add. We also have one with just fractions as well. So we're gonna do a little bit of practice. We're gonna use some of our common denominator strategies. Um, and so we have a lot to do here. So let's go ahead and get started. First, we're gonna estimate each sum and then solve it showing our work. So let's make an estimate. We have three and four sevenths. What would you say if that's close to you? Yeah, three and then four sevenths. Well, four sevenths, I would say that's close to half because half of seven is three and a half or 3.5, yeah. So I would say, well, that's close to three and a half plus, and let's look at this, four and four sevenths. Yep, I would say that's close to four and a half. So if I was looking at this, we have three plus four would be seven plus another whole, because a half and a half is a whole, I would say our answer is going to be close to eight. Good. All right, so let's go ahead and solve this. Now, what I like about this problem is, yeah, our denominators are the same, which makes it a really nice problem for us. So we can go ahead and just add it. So we are going to add our top numbers. So we have four plus four is eight, good, and our bottom number stays the same. And then we have three plus four is, yep, seven. Okay, now in our answer we have an improper fraction, so we're gonna change that over. So we know seven can go into eight, yeah, one more time. So that's gonna boost that seven up to an eight. And if I use seven, that means I have one left over, good and my bottom number stays the same. So eight and one seventh would be our final answer here. And that's pretty close to our estimate, so I think we're right. Let's go ahead and look at our next problem. We have six and three fourths plus one six. Well, six and three fourths, that's close to what? Yeah, three fourths is close to one, so I would say altogether that's close to seven plus one six, that's not very much, so we're just gonna give that a zero. So we're gonna say our answer is gonna be close to seven. Good. All right, so let's look at our denominators first because we wanna make sure they're the same, and as you can tell, in this case, they are not the same. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose a method to find a common denominator. So remember, we talked about ladder method, we talked about QCD, we talked about um, T-chart. What would you like to do? T-chart sounds good to me, so let's do T-chart. I'm gonna put the denominators at the top, so I have a four here and I have a six here. And remember, we're just going to list the multiples of those. So we have four, eight, 12, 
16, we have 6, 12, 18, 24, and normally if you list about four, five, six multiples, you should be able to find one that's in common. I usually go with four or five, and then I can usually find one at that point. We're going to look to see what number is the same on both sides, and guess what? We found 12. So 12 is our common denominator. Our common denominator equals 12. So that's what we're going to use. So what we're going to do is we are going to take this, and we're going to rename this. We're going to rewrite it. So what I like to do is I'm going to extend this line, and what I call these are arrows of change because I'm going to be changing things. Well, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to bring over my whole number. I'm not going to do anything to that whole number. We want to just keep that 6 a 6, okay? Then what I want to do is I'm going to rework my fraction part of my question here. So I want to redo my fractions with a common denominator of 12. So I want this one to be 12 and this one to be 12. So now what I want to do is to use my brother sister rule and so I can figure out what would be my numerators. So 6 times what is 12? 6 times 2 is 12. So 1 times 2 would be 2 because remember whatever you do to the bottom you do to the top. And then in this case we have 4 times what is 12? 4 times 3. So 4 times 3 was 12, so 3 times 3 would be 9. Good. All right. So now remember, like one of the things to notice is your bottom number here, I do 2 times 2, and up here I'm doing 3 times 3. It's not going to be all times 3 or all times 2. It can be different depending on, call this downstairs and upstairs. It could be different. All right, now that we have a common denominator, we can go ahead and add this. So we have 9 plus 2 would be 11 twelfths. And then we're going to add our whole numbers. We have 6. 6 and 11 twelfths. And that is our final answer because I cannot reduce that. Final answer. Good. All right. Let's go ahead and you'll notice, look, we're, we're getting good. Okay, let's make an estimate over here. 7 eighths. That's close to 1, plus hardly anything. We're going to be about 1. And what we're going to do is we need to find a common denominator because you'll notice we have an 8 and a 6, and we can't do that. All right, so we can use QCD. We can teach our ladder method. Here, let's just try ladder method just because we will practice different ways. So we'll put our 8 here, we'll put our 6 here, and let's think about what we can divide, both 8 and 6. What can we use? Yeah, a 2 would go into both of those. Mm -hmm. 8 divided by 2 would be 4, good. And 6 divided by 2 would be 3, good. Is there a number that can divide 3 and 4? Yeah, the only thing I can think of is 1. Good, so what we're going to do is just circle the outside and we are going to multiply these numbers together. So on this side we have 2 and then on this side we have 12. So 2 times 12 is yeah, 24. So our common denominator ends up being 24. So another way you could have done that is just multiply going straight across. So 1 times 2 would be 2, 2 times 4 would be 8, 8 times 3 would be 24. So that's another way to look at it. All right, so we know our common denominator is 24. Now, I'm going to write this a little bit bigger just because I am writing larger. So I'm going to write it over here just to give myself more room. So I know my common denominator needs to be 24. So how did I get from 6 to 24? Yep, times 4. So 1 times 4 would be 4. Good. And how did I get from 8 to 24? Times 3. Good. So 7 times 3 would be 21. Nice. So now we're looking at 21 plus 4. Mm -hmm. That would be 25. And my bottom number would be 24. It would stay the same. Now, I'm not going to leave it like that just because, you know, that's an improper fraction. So I know it goes in one time and I would have 1 24th left over. So 1 and 1 24th would be our final answer. 
And I kind of moved it over here because I'd be writing into that. I don't want to do that. So you can kind of see why I did that. Okay. Estimate. We have another problem here. All right. So we have seven and two thirds plus two and three fifths. So let's make an estimate for that. So seven and two thirds. Yeah, I would go with eight as well. Plus two and three fifths. Well, three fifths is almost half, right? because half of five is two and a half. So it's a little bit over half. So I would say it's about two and a half. So let's see, 10 and a half would be our rough estimate. Good. Okay, so let's see, I used T-chart on this one, I used ladder on this one. Do you wanna use QCD on this one? Yeah, okay, so if I'm using quick common denominator, that means I'm going to take these two numbers and I am going to multiply those together and I get 15. Okay, so I want to change those to 15. We're going to see how small I can write here. Okay, so I'm going to do my arrows of change. And do you remember the next thing we have to do? Yeah, we want to bring over those whole numbers. You don't want to change those whole numbers. Just bring them over. So I'm going to bring over my 7 and bring over my 2. And then I'm going to put my fraction bar. Good. Now what I want to do is put my common denominator down. So I know my common denominator is 15. So that's what I'm going to put. Now I need to figure out my numerator. Yeah, by doing the brother sister rule. So 5 times 3 is 15. So 3 times 3 would be 9. Good. And we know 3 times 15. Well, Oh, well, 3 times 5 would have gave us 15, so 2 times 5 would be 10. Nice. Okay, so now what we get to do is just add it up. So we have 10 plus 9 would be 19 fifteenths. Good. And then we have 7 plus 2, yep, would be our 9. All right, that's an improper fraction, so I'm going to go ahead and change that. I know 15 will go into 19 one more time. So that's going to boost my 9 up to a 10. And if I use 15 of that, that means I only have 4 left over. So I end up having 10 and 4 fifteenths as my final answer there. Good. All right, so we're doing great. Let's look down here at the bottom. It says, for each number story, write a number model with an unknown and make an estimate. Then solve the story, show your work, record your answer, and a summary number model. Use your estimate to check whether your answer makes sense. So we have Mr. Kumar's class ate six and three-fourths pizzas, and Mrs. Reinhardt's class ate four and two-fourths pizzas. How many pizzas did the two classes eat? So it looks like how much did they eat kind of all together? So what would we do in order to figure that out? Yep, I'm going to add those up. So I'm going to write, well, 6 and 3 fourths. And I'm going to add to that the 4 and 2 fourths to get my answer. And I always put n as my variable. Now, if I do an estimate, 6 and 3 fourths, I would say that's close to 7, yeah. Plus 4 and 2 fourths, well, 2 fourths I know is half. So I'm going to say 4 and a half. So, all together, my estimate would be what? Yep, 11 and a half. Okay, so my answer is going to be around 11 and a half. Let's go ahead and answer this. And we are going to um, figure this out. We're going to do a great job here. So, let's rewrite our problem again. And we're going to write it vertically just because it's easier to set it up and solve it this way. So let's go ahead and what do you notice? Yeah, our denominators are the same. This makes it really easy. Okay, so three plus two is five and our denominator stays the same. And then we get to add our whole numbers. So we get 10. Yep, and do you notice that that's an improper fraction? Good, so we want to change that. So four can go into five one more time. So it's gonna boost that 10 up to an 11. Now, if I used four of that, then one would be left over and my denominator stays the same. So I get an answer of 11 and one fourth, and that's pretty close to our estimate. So all together, summary number model means go back to the original problem and put in the answer. So our original problem was six and three fourths 
plus four and two fourths, and our sum ended up being 11 and one fourth as our final answer. Nice, so we are doing fabulous. Okay, we have a couple more problems on the back side, so let's go ahead and look at page 162. We're gonna answer those questions. We have Melanie's superhero costume for the school play requires one and five six yards of green fabric and one third yard of yellow fabric. How many total yards of fabric are needed for the costume? So total yards. So we're going to add those two together, right? Okay, so we have one and five six yards and we're going to add to that a third yard to get our total and I'm going to put n for our unknown. All right, so we need to make an estimate then. So one and five six, yeah, I would say that's close to two as well, plus a third, you wanna go with a half maybe? We can even just keep it a third. So let's just say two and a half or two and one third, that's fine. Okay, guys ready? All right, so we're gonna rewrite this vertically so that we have it set up. So we have one and five six, plus one third. Now when I go to write that, I want to make sure my fraction is lined up under my fraction. It's not a whole number, so you don't want the one third under the one, you want it under the fraction. Fraction over fraction, whole number, whole number. Okay, so you wanna make sure that, that stays in line. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we need to find a common denominator because we can't add those yet because the denominators aren't the same. So, T-chart. Okay, that's fine by me, let's do t-chart. So we have six and we have three. So we have six, 12, 18, 24, three, six, nine, 12. Yeah, you're seeing it. Okay, a six, we also have 12. Which one do you wanna use? Yeah, the six, we always use a smaller one. Okay, remember, arrows of change. Bring over any whole number. This one doesn't have one, that's okay. Bring over your fraction bar. Make sure your fraction bar is lined up with the fraction bar. Fractions under fractions. And our common denominator we're gonna use is six. Okay, what's fun about this is no change means no change for the top. No change in the denominator, no change for the numerator. Okay, so three times what would be six? Yep, times two, so three times two would be six, so one times two would be two, good. Now I can go ahead and add those up. So we have five, six plus two, six, that would be seven, six. Add up our whole numbers, which would be one. And in proper fraction, we know six goes into seven one more time, so that's gonna boost that up to a two. And if I use six, that means I have one left over, so two and one six. So my answer would be two and one six yards. Summary number model, go back to your original and write in our answer. So our original right here said one and five six plus one third. What does that equal? It equals two and one sixth. We have our answer, very good. All right, so we have one more left on this page doing a great job. So we have Charlotte ran five and two thirds mile on Monday and one and five eighths miles on Tuesday. How many miles did she run in all? So yeah, we're going to be adding again. So let's write that down. So we have five and two thirds and we're going to add to that one and five eighths and that equals N for unknown. Estimate five and two thirds. Yeah, I'd go to six plus one and five eighths. Yeah, you know, I would do that too because a half of eight is four, so that's almost half. So I would say that that's about one and a half. Okay, so that would give us seven and a half for our estimate. So our answer should be around seven and a half. Okay, we want to rewrite this vertically, up and down. Whole number under whole number, fraction under fraction. So we wanna write that right. And our denominators are different, so we need to find a common denominator. So first of all, I'm just gonna go ahead and set this up. I'm gonna bring over my whole numbers. Don't change those, just bring them over, okay? 
and I'm going to go ahead and get my fraction bar ready. I'm just setting up the problem. All right, now I need to find a common denominator. What method do you want to use? Do you want to use t-chart? We can, yeah, we can do t-chart. We can use QCD. We haven't used that for a while. All right, let's use QCD. Okay, QCD. QCD means we take the two denominators and we multiply them together and we get 24. So we're going to use 24 as our common denominator. So let's go ahead and put 24 here. All right, so let's look at the fraction. How did I get from 8 to 24? times 3. So 5 times 3 is 15. Good. How did I get from 3 to 24? Times 8. Good. So 2 times 8 would be 16. Good. So now all I get to do is just add that up. So I have 16 plus 15. Well, I know 15 plus 15 is 30, so just add another one. So I have 31 24. And I am going to just add up my whole numbers, and that gives me 6. All right, so I know once again I have an improper fraction. Good. Okay, so 24 can go into 31 one more time. So that's going to boost that up to a 7. Now I use 24 of it. So 31 minus 24. Did you get 7? Okay, I was going to say, you should have got 7. All right, and 7, 24. It's good, because my bottom number stays the same. All right, so if we look at that, our final answer down here at the bottom would be 7. Oops, let me move this up so we can actually see that. So we have 7 and 7, 24. Good. And we are going to write our summary number model, which means go back to the original problem, and let's put in that answer. So we have 5 and 2 thirds plus 1 and 5 eighths. That would give us our sum of 7 and 7 24ths. There we go. You guys did a really good job. When you are adding mixed numbers, first of all, make sure you have a common denominator. And if you have to rename, don't touch that whole number. Just bring it over. Okay, don't touch it. Leave it the same. It's the fraction that you're going to be changing. So you need to use different methods. We use QCD. We use T-chart. We also used um, the ladder method on the other side. So we need to uh, just kind of practice your common denominator methods, and uh, you're doing a fabulous job adding those. Okay, we'll see you again, and maybe we'll work with subtraction next time. All right, thanks. Bye.